Welcome back to part two of controlling nutrients in the aquarium. We're just getting ready to start doing the 30 gallon water change. So why don't you help us out? Come along. We've been discussing nutrient control. We started out discussing the use of pure water as the foundation for keeping nutrients to a minimum in the aquarium. We purify our water at home now. We then add a good quality salt mix to it. So what we're bringing out to the customer is something that is not going to contribute to their nutrient content. So we also talked about the live rock and the live sand as being one of the contributors to nutrients in the system. The assumption is that they come from, from pristine reef around the world, but in fact it could be collected just like the real ocean water from a local harbor or something, and that in turn is influencing the live rock itself, and it could just be leaching that back into the system. I can tell you that in one of the overhauls we did in this tank, I used live rock from a previous system. It appeared to be free of algae, which is what I was trying to accomplish, but it may have contained those nutrients inside the rock like a sponge or what's referred to as a sink and every time that I try to bring the nutrient level down in the system water quality wise it just transfers or leaches or equalizes back into the system from the old rock so that could be one of the sources in addition to the fish and the fish food one of the items that's introduced into the aquarium on a regular basis is the replacement water whether that be replacement water for evaporation or new salt water as a result of doing a water change. That water itself needs to be of high quality as well. Otherwise, you could just be pouring in more nutrients than you can remove from the system. So previously we discussed a few different means of removing nutrients from the system. One of those means was a deep sand bed whereby through the use of bacteria and a low oxygen environment, we're able to remove nitrates from the system. Uh, in addition, we also spoke of another group of bacteria referred to loosely as probiotics. Those bacteria fed properly with a sugar source or a carbon source would be able to remove nutrients from the system as well. And then the other thing that we began to speak of was what's called GFO, which is um, granular ferric oxide. And it essentially is an adsorbent that uh, uh, draws or attracts into itself uh, nutrients. And that occurs in a cylinder something like this. Probably one of the most frequently used items to remove nutrients from the system is a refugium. Now a refugium actually started out as a refuge for small little bits of life that could get a foothold before they were introduced back into the main system. But the aquarium hobby has taken it a step further. By adding a sand or a mud bed to the bottom of a refugium, you can create that low oxygen environment. It also gives you the opportunity to plant um, mangroves in here. Plants will absorb uh, nutrients from the water. And of course, many hobbyists within their refugium will grow either calurpas or chato. Uh, this refugium here was added recently after I decided to take off my homemade algae scrubber because what I wanted to do was put on a proper algae scrubber. In this case it happens to be the hog algae scrubber. Uh, I decided to put this on here because I felt it was more active in removing nutrients whereas the system I had before was working and you could noticeably see in the tank that it was removing the algae from the water but it wasn't doing it very fast. So I had an opportunity to um, install the hog algae scrubber, which is a unit that is designed specifically for this particular task. Now I'm a big fan of the algae scrubbers, and again, this is the hog, and this has been on here for about six weeks. And you can see that there's a pretty significant amount of algae growing inside there. And this is free nutrient removal. All you paid for was the mechanism to grow it and every week or every two weeks, you could be removing, in this particular case, 
a pretty significant amount of algae. And again, this is two weeks worth of growth, and this very effectively removes nutrients from the system. The hog algae scrubber uses a couple of small little LED lights to encourage the growth of algae. And through the use of aeration, it's able to move an abundance of water past the actual screen that the algae grow in, thus providing uh, a means of bringing nutrients to the algae on a regular basis. And again, this is two weeks worth of growth here inside the unit. So unlike all of those other methods where you have to continually replace the filter media, there's no real indication as to exactly when it's exhausted, uh, the hog algae scrubber, or really any algae scrubber, is going to grow its own media that removes nutrients from the system. This is a goodly amount of growth, and this only occurred in two weeks, and I didn't have to do anything. I just set up the unit and allow it to grow in there, and it produces this. It's one of the few, if not the only, nutrient removal system that actually gives me something back. Doesn't require me to continually replace or put something back in or tumble something. This is a no-brainer. It just removes nutrients and grows by itself. Are you still tumbling bio pellets? Tired of constantly replacing your GFO? Or trying to grow algae in your refugium? And you still have algae problems? Get real! Real filtration, that is. Algae scrubbers from Santa Monica Filtration will turn this into this by growing this weekly. Two styles of scrubbers, the hog and the surf. Both are extremely easily installed and noticeably effective. You want results? Algae scrubbers are the answer. Visit santa-monica.cc Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. So you can see in here, there's still algae on the rocks. And the previous algae scrubber, the homemade version that I put in, did work. Uh, it just wasn't as efficient as, say, maybe something designed specifically to uh, do that particular task. So I've had this hog out in here for, I'm going to say, maybe eight weeks now. So far, I'm quite pleased with the results, at least in what it's producing as far as um, uh, algae, which is what removes the nutrients from the system. Ultimately, the goal is to try to eliminate all the uh, nutrients that are feeding, or at least the, what the algae is feeding on here in the system. In quick review, we discussed a number of means to reduce nutrients. Those range from adsorbing type media such as zeolite clays and GFO. Both of these require frequent replacement. We also spoke of methods of creating low oxygen environments to reverse the biological process and vent out nitrogen as a gas. Additionally, we discussed the use of conversion by bacteria such as bio pellets and the probiotic approach. I also mentioned the benefits of water changes as a means of flushing out debris before they even become nutrients, as well as employing regular maintenance practices in the form of filter pads and filter socks. So we discussed quite a bit how to remove nutrients from the system. 
we only discussed how to minimize nutrients coming into the system in one manner, and that is to present or provide as pure a water as possible using some type of a purification system to make your foundation water or the fresh water, and then using a quality brand of salt mix to make salt water. Of course, another thing to take into consideration when adding fish to the tank is which fish are going to be the most appropriate choices. Are they fish that are going to graze off the reef, nibble on those algaes, feed on the little sponges and copepods and um, arthropods that flourish throughout the system? Or is it going to be fish that you have to put food and a fairly good amount of food into the tank on a regular basis, whether that be every other day or daily? The biggest item that influences nutrients in the system is your foods, flake foods as well as frozen foods. They all contain elements that add to that nutrient level in the system. But the reality is you cannot not put food into the system. Your livestock needs to eat. So what's the answer? Try to find that happy medium point that doesn't build up an abundance of nutrients and yet all the food is consumed at one time. Ironically, whether consumed or not, that food still becomes waste. Defining what type of fish you want in the aquarium in advance is a great starting point. If your desire is groupers, lionfish, and stingrays, I would not attempt a living coral reef tank. These fish would require daily and heavy feedings of both live and frozen foods. If your interest is large angels and butterfly fish, there are a variety of frozen and flake foods available but neither fish is appropriate for a coral reef tank. Should you select small dwarf angelfish, gobies, hawkfish, and tangs, these would all be great choices for the living reef tank. The amount and frequency of feeding should evolve around daily, and typically the amount of food is consumed within three minutes. And so those would be some of the ways of trying to control nutrients within the system. But really the key to the whole thing is to avoid introducing them from the very beginning. And so as we finish this service and get ready to take off on another one, and as you in turn continue to deal with nutrient issues as well as other things in your aquarium, just remember one thing. Always keep moving forward.